You are welcome to GMAT 41's Organic Chemistry class. This is Organic Chemistry 1. In this video, we introduce organic chemistry as well as the classification of organic chemistry and subsequently a UPAC nomenclature of the homologs that you're going to study in this Organic Chemistry 1. Organic chemistry we know is the branch of chemistry that deals with the study of carbon and its compound. But please, it's very important for you to know that when we say it studies carbon and its compound, it does not include oxides of carbon like carbon peroxide and carbon two oxide. It also does not include trioxocarbonates, CO3 to minus, right? Something like sodium trioxocarbonate 4, calcium trioxocarbonate 4, it does not include these ones. The reason is because oxides of carbon and trioxocarbonates are inorganic compounds. So they are studied under inorganic chemistry. Carbon is one element that forms numerous compounds. There are many of them. Some of them are naturally occurring, others are synthesized, that is, obtained, produced from the laboratory. Now, the question is, what is that property that makes carbon a bit unique, having this ability to form a very large compound? What's this property? This property is called catenation. Take note of that. Catenation. Catenation is a property of carbon that allows it to link to other carbons in order to form what? A straight chain or even a cyclic chain. The ability of carbon to link to other carbons. We now want to look at classification of organic chemistry. There are five main classes of organic chemistry. On the board here, we have them. So this is the list we are going to look through them quickly. As we move on step by step to other higher forms of chemistry, you will be discussing these classifications one after the other. In organic chemistry one, we shall focus on aliphatic compounds. So these are the five classes. Can we go through them? Aliphatic compounds, alicyclic compounds, aromatic compounds, heterocyclic compounds, of course, polycyclic or polynuclear compounds. Remember, like I stated, the focus of this organic chemistry one is on aliphatic compounds. What are aliphatic compounds? Let's take a look. These are compounds in which carbon atoms are joined together to form straight open chain. Please take note of that statement. To form what? Open chain. Open. So carbon there, they do not form ring. They don't close. They are open. Examples of homologs that fall under these aliphatic compounds, we have things like the alkanes, the alkenes, the alkynes. What about alkanols? Alkanoic acids. Derivative of alkanoic acid like the alkanoates which we refer to as esters, right? The acid chloride, the acid amide, the acid anhydride, they are all derivative of alkanoic acid. Because talk about the alkanars, the alkanones, you know, ketones and aldehyde. And then we also have other ones like the nitrons. Is that okay? The list continues, but just keep these ones, all right? Now, we want to look at the next classification, aromatic compounds. These compounds are ringed compounds. They are cyclic compounds based on benzene ring. You would have to see benzene there. From our basic chemistry, all right, maybe O-level chemistry, we may have heard of the calculate structure of benzene. So possibly the structure of benzene is no longer new to us, just like one of these, right? Good. So, Aromatic compounds are based on what? Benzene ring. They are cyclic compounds because they are closed rings. We have some examples of them listed on the board. Benzene is one of these aromatic compounds. We have methyl benzene. Methyl benzene, also known as toluene. That is benzene that has methyl, CH3, as an attachment. We also have things like phenol. Phenol is the same as hydroxyl benzene, benzene that has OH hydroxyl in it. We have aniline. Aniline is benzene that has the amino group NH2. We also call it amino benzene. What about nitrobenzene? It has NO2 and the rest of them. They are examples of what? Aromatic compounds. We now look at classification number three, alicyclic compounds. These compounds are also what? Cyclic compounds. They are ring compounds, right? Cycle. The only difference is that they are not based on benzene rings. So you wouldn't see a benzene structure there. In this case, the carbon atoms are joined either by single or by double word. Um, so we have examples like cycloalkanes, 
Now we'll talk about things like cyclopropane, of course that's the first member there, cyclobutane, cyclopentane, cyclohexane, and the rest. We also have cycloalkenes, cycloalkenes. We'll talk about cyclohexane, cyclopentane, and the rest. We now want to look at the next classification, heterocyclic compounds. See, heterocyclic compounds is uh, just like uh, it's just like this alicyclic compounds. The only difference is that in heterocyclic compounds, within the cycle, you would see one atom which is not carbon. The atom could be sulfur, it could be oxygen, it could be nitrogen. Is that okay? So, have some examples here: thiophene. Sulfur is seen in the ring. This thing looks like cyclopentane. All right. They have two uh, uh, double bond here, which will make it die in. You can see, look at this point. We have carbon here. You can see the dots, carbon, carbon, carbon. But at this point, there's supposed to be carbon. It's now replaced with what? Sulfur. We call this thiophene. This is furan. Oxygen is the heteroatom there. We call this pyrrole. Nitrogen is the heteroatom. We call this pyridine. Now, you see, this one looks like benzene, right? But it's not benzene because the sixth point that should be occupied by carbon, which could have made this benzene, is now replaced with what? Nitrogen. So this is pyridine. All these atoms that are not carbon, sulfur, oxygen, nitrogen, we refer to them as heteroatoms. Lastly, we have polycyclic, also known as polynuclear compounds. These are compounds that are formed as a result of benzene ring joined or linked together. You can have two or more benzene rings joined together. We refer to them as polycyclic or polynuclear compounds. Examples include naphthalene, you can see two benzene rings joined. We have anthracene, three benzene rings joined straight ahead. And then we have phenanthrene, still three benzene rings. But look at where the third benzene ring is placed, okay? So you can differentiate it from um, anthracene. In the next video, we're going to look at functional group, one very important thing in the study of organic chemistry. And as well, we're going to look at the nomenclature of different homologs, as you will study in organic chemistry 1. Do not forget, our focus will be on aliphatic compounds. Now, we want to look at homologous series and functional group, but previously, Homologous series has been defined to be a family of organic compounds that have certain similar characteristics. Is that not so? For example, a particular homolog will have a general pattern of preparation, they will have a general molecular formula, they will have general chemical property, and on successive members of a given homolog differs from the next with a methylene group, that is a CH2 group, the molecular mass of that CH2 is 14. That defines homologous series for us. Now, this homologous series is, is just like a family of organic compounds. Is that okay? Now, when you come to a lymphatic compound, we have these different families. And it's important that for each family, you are able to identify them. Please take note of this. If you can't identify a particular family, then it will be difficult to study that family. The question now is, how do you identify a given homolog? This takes us into defining functional groups. Functional groups is just like surname. It's like if you become a family, you have a surname unique to that family. You have this other family, you have a surname unique to it, okay? Now let us define it in terms of organic chemistry, in terms of chemistry. Functional groups are simply atoms, radicals, or maybe a common bond that a particular homolog has. When you come to that homolog, all the members of that family will have that functional group. In fact, functional group is used to define or determine the chemical property of a particular group. Please, very, very important. Functional group determines the main chemical property of a particular homolog, a particular series. Now, the board here we have 14 functional groups corresponding to 14 different homologs that you're going to study in Organic Chemistry 1 here. Is that okay? Now starting with alkanes, we have alkanes, alkynes, alkanols, halogenal alkanes, we have the alkanol, the alkanone, we have the alkanoic acid, that's carboxylic acid, we have the alkanoates, which you know as esters, we have the acid chloride, also called the acid chloride, we have the acid amide, we have the acid anhydride, we have the nitrites, and we have the amines. 
Now, knowing the name of V symbolized is not the problem. Being able to remember or identify their functional group, that atom, that radical, that band that determines the main chemical property of the group is the most important thing. And so you have them here, please, you want to go through them, is that okay? For these, our canes are identified by carbon to carbon single bond. So single bond is the functional group of our canes. So if you give it a compound here, you see all the carbons linked by single single bonds, then this compound is an alkane. Then look at alkane, it's double bond. This is unsaturated hydrocarbon, right? Even alkyne is unsaturated triple bond. So you can see double bond is the functional group for alkane, triple bond is the functional group for alkyne. What about alkanol? The hydroxyl, OH, is the functional group. Please, you want to differentiate between this hydroxyl in organic chemistry as the functional group of alkanols and the hydroxide ion. Hydroxide ion you encounter in uh, the study of inorganic chemistry, which used to identify bases or alkalines, right? It's given by OH negative. Please differentiate it from this. This is simply OH, it's a radical, right? Good. Now we have for halogenol alkane, that is Rx. This R is an alkyl. An alkyl is an alkane that has lost one hydrogen. For example, we know about CH4 to be methane. Methane is an alkane. If it loses one hydrogen, it becomes CH3. This CH3 is an alkyl called methyl. Is that okay? We have other ones like ethyl, propyl, and the rest. X here is a halogen. So you can think of fluorine, bromine, chlorine, iodine. Is that okay? Well, in most cases in the study of organic chemistry, you know what? We use more of chlorine and bromine. What about the functional group of alkanal, CHO? You can see something here that a bond line is left. This is to show that it can either be hydrogen attached to the carbon or an alkyl attached. Is that okay? Just like you have the expansion here. So CHO is a functional group of alkanal. Then alkanone is RCOR prime. Did you take note of something here? There is no hydrogen attached to this carbon bearing this oxygen. There is no hydrogen. We refer to that carbon as carbonyl carbon, okay? This carbon is doubly bonded to this oxygen. For alkanone, it does not bear any hydrogen. You can see that there, right? Now this R and R prime are alkyls. Alkyls. R may be the same as R prime or it may be different. When we move into each of the homologues in discussing them, we will understand this fact. Now, alkanoic acid is a functional group COOH. This is the expansion. The first oxygen is doubly bonded to the carbon, and then you have your OH. We have alkanoids for the functional group. We have the acid chloride. You can see the functional group COCl, and then the rest of them. Is that okay? So we are going to take these similar one after the other, starting with alkanes in our next class.